this video, I'm going to show you how to use an extensometer. And that is something that will measure the change in length of just this, um, just the reduced area of the sample. So we're not incorporating like um, the grips wiggling or the grip faces digging into the sample. It is a better measurement of the extension of the sample, of the strain. Um, if you look at this part, uh, basically if I hold it like this, you can see my palm is on these two pieces and my finger is in the middle. If I push on it like this, then I see these contact points, the connectors like move away from it. And you'll see also that it's like a little dip that goes into there. So this is good for a flat sample. If I put it onto this piece of steel, you can see how it makes contact with it and it stays still. Um, if I've got a cylindrical sample, then I have some other uh, versions of these metal clips that we'll put on by loosening these um, screws here. And we'll look into um, this little box here. So we can see that there's, there's other versions of this where um, you may be able to hold you know, round samples. There's also smaller extensometers that will have a smaller what we call gauge length and travel distance. On the covers of these, you will see the model number, which will have gauge length. The travel distance is half an inch. Um, yeah, so how precise it is, all that. Um, to use one of those, basically, on the other side of this cable is a connector that goes into the back of this controller unit, and it will be in the channel called, uh, I think, axial strain. So plug it into there. The way we make sure that that data gets recorded is in this method tab, we go into channels, and we check off this box here under axial strain, that row. And if the thing is plugged in, we should see the value here. Right? It might take a couple seconds to recognize it once we check the box off, but it should appear there. Okay, so for our sample, let's go ahead and attach it to the steel here. I've already got the grips tightened and everything. We'll just put it into the middle of the sample there. At this point, um, we'll make sure that that axial strain number is zeroed off. So we're going to go to axial strain. Um, we can actually pretty much zero everything um, except for the load because we're actually compressing the sample a little bit. So we can zero out position and axial strain by clicking these zero buttons on the sides. The next thing we'll do is we'll remove the pin from the extensometer, just a little black thing that's in the back, and it lets it travel. So we want to make sure that it is put in there when we um, clamp the sample. But after that, we can pull that pin and just let it hang. And then we can start pulling the sample. Right? And just so you can see the difference, um, on my XY graph, I will... Um, on that X1, I'll actually plot the axial strain so you can see that. Alright, so we'll start the test. And what you'll notice here is um, that that linear portion is uh, pretty straight. This is the yield point. As this curve is uh, increasing, this is some strain hardening that's going on with my sample until we're going to reach on. Um, some maximum load up here. If the failure is going to be catastrophic, then I could um, pause the sample here, and I could remove my extensometer at this point. And then hit the play button and finish the test. So typically when we have that extensometer on, we're recording up to like the yield point with that, and we could remove it after. Um, they're fairly sensitive instruments, so we don't want to uh, necessarily keep them on the sample when they fail all the time. So that was the sound of the failure of the sample. Um, at that point, we can loosen up these grips and remove the sample.